wonderful good evening everyone please welcome Ala Drugova from Kiev and David Mancini from Munich tonight we will be discussing uh, a nice thunder of Darienzo with the Chagwe of the years of 38-39 for the easy welcome round um, do you still remember what was your first contact with Darienzo Ala? I don't really recognize that it was the answer or not. Uh, I was lucky enough to be in the first group of the first school in my small native city. And we started dancing to different music. And there was a Darienzo, but I think that there was super, super crazy Darienzo, not the one we usually listen on the longest in well, Ukraine. What, what is the super, super crazy Darienzo? Like Loka, probably, but also Darienzo. Yeah, Italians like. <laughs> <laughs> this is weird. Italians like. So we have an Italian <laughs> that, that is with us. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> what was your first contact with Darienzo that you remember, David? By the way, Darienzo was the son of Italians and immigrants. Darienzo is a typical surname that comes from the south of Italy. And however, my first contact was with my uncle that actually was a tango bed dancer in the 50s in Sardinia. And uh, he was a good, he is a good collector of, of um, tango music. And he plays music for the friends in the country, small parties that take place in Sardinia in the holidays. And so when I was a kid, he was used to play in the summertime on a terrace in, uh, in Alghero, where we have, uh, we all the family, all the Sardinian part of the family has the, ha has the houses in the same building in this beautiful place, which is Alghero. And he was used to go on the rooftop uh, that had a terrace. And especially in the late afternoon, sunset time, he was used to play music for himself with vinyls and sometimes with the, uh, some friends of him that uh, were used to dance tango. So I guess that was the first, the first uh, time where I met that. And then when I started to DJ, I was, uh, I was following Felix Picerna, which is my mentor, let's say, my first uh, DJ mentor. And he was, totally in love with Darienzo, especially Darienzo Echagüe, that he says it's the most danceable tango of all. Like when he wanted to lift up the energy or when he wanted to do party time, that was Darienzo time. And he was used to shout uh, while playing between one song and the other, like Juan Darienzo, or like uh, Falta la Mejor. And then it was amazing. I remember these times in Tanguera, which was a great milonga in Rome uh, about 15 years ago, I guess. And uh, yeah, he was, he was totally in love with Darien Sochawe. And so that's why I guess that that was the first, uh, these songs are like one of my first uh, love with tango, I guess. I remembered. That was Ramos. <laughs> it was Ramos. Oh. Yeah, it's like Dimolo, Eloido, or something. Sentimiento gaucho, mi dolor. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we rarely oh. listen it uh, now in Kiev, like almost never. <laughs> or if, only if invited DJ played, and usually it's Italian DJ. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I remember a wonderful show of Sebastian Arce and Mariana Montes on, on Ramos. I guess that it was. 2011 when they were pretty much fixed with Ramos and there is a memorable choreography of Mi Dolor which was unbelievable but I guess that's not the point of the of the meeting today so <laughs> it's, it, it, sorry. <laughs> it's always nice to get some anecdotes so uh, and, and it's actually to, to yeah about connections with the music and uh, anecdotes can be beautiful connections um, between the big four orchestras, how much do you like Darienzo? You say I'm all Darienzo, or you say no, I'm more Troilo, 
Pugliese or even this early? How would you describe yourself? Third place for the Reans. Third place. <laughs> and what are the first two? Uh, try to guess. <laughs> Well, I'm joking. Uh, of course, Pugliese is the first one and Troilo the second one. And yeah, this are on fourth. <laughs> David? Uh, I cannot do that. You cannot do that. You don't have to. It, it was just a question. <laughs> no, I guess I guess it depends on the situation and atmosphere and the partner. So there are days in which you want to feel the drama in in the i mean feel the the pure emotions that you have and you want to set them free in order to set yourself free and so in that case in those cases maybe pugliese or even troilo rufino can be the best tanda to dance and other moments in which you want to express this powerful energy and set it out and shout it and then maybe a Darienzo is the perfect moment. And then, of course, in, in, the, in the orchestras, there are, it's not, you cannot talk about generally about Pugliese or Darienzo in order to, to cast feeling, feelings or emotions or even disarly. If you take the cho il Choclo, for example, that, yeah, it's disarly, but it's a huge variation. So it, again, it's not, it's not any disabling, it's not any Darienzo, but I guess, yeah. Of course. Uh, I love Darienzo, I do love it. Especially already, valses. Especially valses. In this uh, moment, yeah. You already mentioned that your first contact with Darienzo was already the, the contact with uh, Darienzo at Chagua Thuris. Uh, Ala, you said first it was Ramos. Uh, when did you get to know and or to appreciate and love uh, Darienzo at Chagua? Um, I guess so when I started DJing uh, and sort out for me all the orchestras, uh, so I finally start to recognize the difference. And after I started DJing, I also started to take some lectures in DJing. And at that moment, I already had the um, some, I, I felt difference. And yes, I, I felt like that answer is quite rhythmical and active and I like it and it was funny that I hated Biagi at that moment but I could stand the end so <laughs> you already started what makes uh, this period uh, so special what do you love about it uh, why do we hear it so often at the Milonga why do dancers love it I have a funny um let's say advice which I uh, heard from my DJ friends they said that if a milonga is dying if something happened if you need uh, dancers to go to the dance floor just play Darienze Chago and you have it <laughs> so this is the tanda which will bring people to dance like no questions I guess it's also bringing me to dance floor david always <laughs> well yeah i i agree i definitely agree it's like and the point is sometimes you need you need to lift up the energy of the crowd and in the same time you have to deal with the level or the knowledge of of tango that that the crowd have so darien socha especially this darien socha where like the late uh let's say from 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 the Biagi departure to the 40s it's pretty much danceable from everybody even though there are variations there but it's yeah still easy to dance and very intuitive and very strong so you lift up the energy everybody dance everybody feel like Tony Manero so I guess that it's a jolly jolly tanda um, you mentioned very energetic, it gets us up to dance. You mentioned also the variaciones. So we, we hear a lot of uh, quick notes at the end of these tangos uh, by the bandonians, by the piano. Uh, what else is uh, characteristic for these two years, 38, 39? Well, if we're saying that uh, we're talking about uh, those years uh, where we, we're forgetting about Biagi, there's Polito, 
So the mm, piano is different. And also I feel that Echago also, also started uh, sing differently in 39 at least. And of course there's a war and it gets the beat, let's say more tough, more strong, more powerful. So maybe for me, this is the, uh, the main difference at least for uh, together, like in comparison to the previous years, which more and more cheerful. And yeah, they are getting heavy. <laughs> They're getting he heavy. Well, structure wise, I think you can pretty much identify a, stru a typical structure of those Darienzos, even from the Biaggi revolution, I guess that this comes from the Biaggi entering the Darienzo orchestras and those four years that they have been working together, I think that Biaggi influenced pretty much the way that Darienzo developed his style. In this tanda you generated, I would exclude the first song because Nomientas has a special structure, which is different from the other three and from the, I, most of the other Darienzos of the period. But I guess in those, those era that Darienzo is typically dividing the phrases into uh, dedicating each phrase to a main instrument, which can also be the voice. And normally you have the piano phrase, which is right before the variation. So apart from Nomientas, which has a different structure with the variation in the middle and there's no real piano phrase, and it's also slur. Uh, the other three are pretty much the same and the structure is like presenting the song at the beginning with the typical rhythmical play and structure and then it goes to the violin and then it goes to the to the voice and then voice and violin together with piano insertions and then the piano only piano phrase and then which may be in 16 or 8 and then the variation which can be one or two phrases in a row that finishes the song. I guess this is the typical structure. In this tanda you did, the, the nomientas is like the only one that doesn't respond to this uh, structure. You're getting very much into detail. Uh, we, I would like that we have this detailed discussion after we listen to the tanda. Yeah. Welcome uh, once more, if you're joined now, please welcome Ala Drugova from Kiev and David Mancini from Munich. Uh, tonight's tanda, No Mientas, Que Importa, El Vino Triste, Trago Amargo, the transfers I use are from Tango Tunes. So that's it. Please mute yourself and enjoy the tanda. <laughs> palabras la canción de mi esperanza y en tus tibias manos se durmió mi corazón era tan feliz y fue tan ciega mi confianza que jamás la duda vino a mi razón pero hoy solo siento que tus lágrimas me queman y ese llanto impío que me quiere convencer es la carcajada de tu voz que me condena a vivir siempre engañado en su querer Thank you. 
quiero verte con el alma descubierta, afrontando todo por tener sinceridad, para que al marcharme con mi pobre, pobre muerta, se lleve al menos de tus labios la verdad. Poco tiempo atrás era tu querer la luz que alumbraba mi existencia y para los dos fue tan solo ayer no existía la palabra ausencia el nuestro era el amor de los 20 años amor de Margarita y de Duval pero lo de siempre un desengaño al final nos tuvo que apartar ¿Qué importa? que me digan que has cambiado y un brillante has colocado en el sitio del corazón. ¿Qué importa si te fuiste de mi lado? Solo yo sé por qué fue, tu cariño lo pagué con maldad y con traición. Amigos, que mi vino es triste, que no tengo aguante ya para el licor. Soy un maleta que ya no resiste, de la caña brava ni el macho sabor. Y es que ya se ha muerto todo lo que existe, y entre copas quiero matar mi rencor. Siempre estoy borracho desde que te fuiste, siempre estoy borracho, pero es de dolor. Amigo. A todos pido perdón, si amargado y tiristón, lagrimean en donde me ve. Quiero domar mi emoción, pero aflojo tan bien como todo varón. Amigo, cuando se tiene un pesar dentro del corazón, no se puede evitar que el vino se vuelva pesado y llorón, como el triste aletear de mi canción.
me cierro como viejita que ha mirado y en sí de un cimarrón para que dure largo hacer que esa silla que el fuego se ha apagado revuelva aquella parada y se ve bien amargo alcance esa guitarra de cuerdas empolvadas que tantas veces se ha dado su y arranque de esa cinta donde era desalmada por dos con su felicidad mi gaucho corazón usted lo recuerda madrecita blanca como la quería, como yo la vez, me puse mi vida, mi daga y mi banda, y sin embargo, madre, la ingrata me fue, papá de la leña que en mi vida los ojos me lloran, yo no sé por qué, pues quiero olvidarla, ahogándome en caña, y quiero estar cerca, cerquita de usted. envuelva a los bañados y se oiga ya a lo lejos el toque de oraciones inclínese a la virgen de los desamparados y a mi pobre guitarra con lo que me unge Welcome back Before I played the tanda, I didn't have the time to talk about my Darienzo experience I remembered when I started playing the tanda um, my first uh, contact with Darienzo that I remember was 50s Darienzo, also two of the songs that I played tonight, uh, El Vino Triste and Trago Amargo, uh, 54 and 55, uh, Chago and Laborde are the singers there. And uh, it was only later when I started DJing that I really got into the 30s Darienzo. And also then, when I started teaching, I was first preferring the Renzo with Maori and uh, to, to to really love the, um, the Renzo Chagua came for DJ quite late, I would say, maybe after the first year. Um, what you said, Allah, uh, at the beginning, I agree totally that it's uh, the tanda that keeps everybody from going, that uh, invites everybody to come back to the dance floor for that I, me personally, I keep it uh, rather late that um, now when I feel, okay, now I, I need a, a new impulse that people keep on dancing, then, then I play it. And of course, you could also play it earlier, but um, kind of a joker. And uh, for that, I keep it late. Um, David, you were talking about how the structure is of, of, of these songs. Uh, the first song, uh, the form of the tanda, I would still uh, call symphony form um, that I was talking of already a couple of weeks ago. Uh, what was the symphony form? That symphony has an introduction and symphony has the third movement that is different from the rest. And uh, here similar, the, um, the second one is more quickly, uh, quicker than the first one. So it's a confirmation and uh, moves forward. And the third one starts with the major part and has a different character from the beginning, the Vino Triste. And by that, it uh, changes a little bit the um, development of the tanda. And the last one, Trago Amargo, for me is the most complex one and maybe also most interesting because of a lot of syncopation to play with. So in, in that case, it's a classic uh, finale. So the most challenging or most interesting song is at the end. Um, the first song is different, as you noticed. How is it different? One of the um, uh, ways it's different it's that it's still the old way that um, just one part is sung. So we have the stanza sung, but the, the estrishibo is not sung. It's just instrumental. And uh, in 38, it was already many other orchestras recorded already both parts. So in, in, in this um, perspective, Darienzo is a little bit old fashioned to, to have some yeah, Guardia Vieja elements. In, in, well, I guess I guess you as a as a professional musician can give much more explanation that uh, what I can do. The thing is, I I have some some very basic knowledge on on music, and I've heard many stories about these couple uh, intending like Darienzo and Biaggi together. 
And if we consider that the last uh, Biaggi, the, the last D'Arienzo Biaggi song was, I guess, uh, Champagne de Tango. It was recorded in end of June, uh, 38. And we consider that it was not uh, a happy, it was not like a relaxed uh, separation between the two. And so I feel in these in these nomientas, but this is like some behindology that we can do. I feel that uh, Darienzo tried to renegade, try to deny all the evolution that reminded people that Biaggi was there playing the piano with this protagonism. So I think that the first attempt of Darienzo after Biaggi left the group was like to evolve the music in a direction that could be able to make people forget the, the imprinting that Biaggi gave to the orchestra. And then right after, I see that probably he understood that it was better not to do that. And so he went back to the, to the, to the original style with Biagi that finishes with these increasing level of energy with the variation at the end. If you, if you feel the ending with the dominant violin in Omientas, it's pretty weak. Um. Um, that's quite strong. Uh, uh, we would ask him. We would have to ask him. Uh, what I would like to discuss in this format in particular is like to go one step ahead. So to ask what is typical Biaggi and what is typical Darienzo and what are the parts in the song that remind us of this and what are the unusual parts in the song. And um, we all know um, Darienzo is called El Rey del Compas, so the king of the beat and the beat in a more precise way we call Marcato in four. So we have this marcato, tum, 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 for uh, as the most common accompaniment in, in, in his songs, especially in this period. Um, what I like to point out is that although it's very dominant, Darienzo plays also with the pausas, that we have the marcato, but sometimes the marcato stops. And then we have uh, something that is not accompanied. And speaking about uh, typical elements of Biaci was the, where the piano bridges and very often like when we have the main theme presented we have the marcato in four and then comes the bridge but the bridge is not accompanied so we just have the piano alone more freedom for the pianist to do it and that we still have in in Nomientes as well and uh, very very i would say dominant even and another thing however we miss yeah however we miss the piano phrase Manos Brujas yeah, okay. was we come to the piano phrase. We come to the piano phrase. Let's, uh, especially for the non-DJs, let's uh, give some examples uh, that we slowly build up. And uh, the other interesting thing um, people attribute a lot to Biaggi is offbeat. And uh, in this song, we also have uh, some offbeat parts uh, in, in Darienzo. And for me, offbeat is used by all orchestras, and we have it in the Sadly, especially also in the 40s and 41, and we have it also with Troilo, and uh, the other time we, we also had uh, in the later Troilo and mid-40s still the offbeat in not a funny way, but still playing with it. So it's... Uh, yeah, let's listen to the lot. beginning um, once more. And uh, here the marcato, the, the, the stop of the marcato, and the bridge, and uh, the offbeat. I start from the very beginning and I will interrupt. So until now, we didn't have a lot of piano bridges, but we had some offbeat parts. And we had, um, in the third phrase, the piano coming in and doing a little solo. Um, let's listen again to the third phrase.
now it continues. Uh, before we continue listening to, to the B part, one thing that I think is very important to understand uh, the popularity of Darienzo is that Darienzo plays a lot with the articulation. So he uses a very dry staccato at the beginning very often, um, but he also has the legato that comes later. Sometimes he gives it in the same phrase, sometimes afterwards. But by this, the music is uh, more balanced because it's super dry and very rhythmic. And at the same time, we have a phrase that we might take more into the embrace and more and more continuous. And it's not, uh, yeah, it, it's something we, we don't talk so much about, but I think it's very important to understand and, uh, the popularity of that again. So, um, we have the beginning of the B part with the bandonian solo, also very typical of Darienzo, and here we have the piano bridge system. <laughs> So that was the first uh, very classic piano bridge, the abandonian stop, and the piano takes over and links to the next phrase. And after two phrases, the violins come in and create a new color in contrast to the more dry color of the bandonions and the strong marcato that we had. And the piano switch. Bandonions in the back. And then starts a chagwe. So sometimes the Rienzo is uh, criticized for his simplicity. But I would say that even with very simple measures, he creates a lot of different colors in, in this opening minute of the tango. And uh, I would say this is one of the things that I love to dance, uh, or I love when I dance Darienzo, and why Darienzo is different uh, than other just rhythmic music and more balanced. Um, Yes. Hello. Uh, Buddy was, uh, talking so much and uh... <laughs> yesterday I had a chance to dance to the stand up and uh, I actually noticed that it was quite easy to dance to because uh, we hear usually like two layers of instruments in the same time and it's easy to choose sometimes even only one and beat. So I guess this is one of the reasons why people like to dance to that answer. So it's uh, energetic, uh, it's uh, bring, uh, inviting you to, to dance, but it's also easy somehow. Like you, you don't have um, too many options. <laughs> uh, exactly, thanks for pointing that out. Darienzo is reducing the music to a skeleton. And I think this was one of his accomplishments um, accomplishments um, in 35 when he started to create this new style that in the Guardia Vieja we have a lot of things happening at the same time but none is really dominating so it's a little bit and the, the beat the Mercato in four is not too strong and happening most of the time so it's kind of okay I could go the violins but it's already the third the fourth uh, contracanto and Darienzo put it more clear now we have one part and now we have another and sometimes, I mean, we can only choose between beat and, and melody, but for me, the beat is more, um, it's a character and it's um, giving us direction and inspiration, but just to dance the beat, it's not uh, su such a, an interesting choice. Uh, we will have other moments in, in the Thunder where we really have uh, uh, different choices possible. Uh, David, you mentioned the violins at the end, uh, and I think it's an untypical thing of Darienzo here. Like, Darienzo loves the violin contracantos, and especially in the instrumentals of the 30s, he uses uh, a lot of them. But in the period with the Chagua, we have violins when the Chagua starts to sing sometimes, but there's a big violin solo, rather uh, not so often. Let's listen to this. It's, as you said, uh, mentioned before, before the end, uh, the closing part. Um, 
it's something very typical that Ienzo does that he starts with this tracataka tang, but then the violins enter and um, the main theme of the tango is not continued and it's just reduced to the beat, to the uh, macchiato in four. And we have the violins doing the contracanto. In the Sarli, for example, very often we have both happening. So we still have uh, in the background uh, the main theme and the violins uh, playing the contracanto. Tarienzo reduces. Uh, Troilo sometimes as well, that uh, he brings a new theme and the new theme is replacing the old one. And he, what I like here is that we have always the beginning of the phrase from the main theme and the, the violin. And again. And here was one of these pauses, also what I love about Darienzo. So it was all the time, tang, 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 but here suddenly it stops. Uh, shortly before. And also the, the offbeat. And, uh, and now the offbeat again. Yeah, yeah. His accent to introduce the. So for me, it, it's very interesting to, to finish with it. And he still has the variaciones now. So now comes the classic variaciones. Yeah. <laughs> no, there's no variations. Um, th that was what you meant, that in the end he just has uh, Chagwe coming back and we have the violins. Yeah. I mean, those are all great pieces, and as as you told, you build up this standard, seeing the, the what don't hear you from. Uh, complexity. Wait, can you hear me? No, no, I hear you again. You hear me? Try again. Okay. So, uh, yes, as you said at the beginning, you build up this tanda in seeing it as a as a growing uh, uh, as, a, as a as something which grows in terms of emotion and complexity. And uh, it's nice, as you see, as you say, to, to notice how it grows, actually, from the first song to the last one, there is a big crescendo of the, of the, also the complexity, I guess, the final, the creation at the end is one of the most uh, interesting aspects from the dancer perspective, somehow, because this can also determine whom you're dancing the tanda with, so you can dance so without variation with mostly anybody. However, if you go for a Darienzo Tanda with variation, you need a partner that might have some skills more than the one you would choose for a Darienzo without variation. That's, that's my point. We had um, a similar discussion last week when we were discussing Pugliese. And actually, with Pugliese, I put uh, four, four instrumentals with variaciones, uh, although there are far more without. And there it was like the variaciones that were uh, mm -hmm. the, the right thread to, um, to keep the tunnel together. But with Darienzo, mm -hmm. also with uh, Lauren's Casas, if you have all the songs that finish with the variaciones, uh, me as a dancer, I also get a little bit exhausted or um, so for me, it makes sense not to have all four songs with variaciones. For you, you would prefer to have four songs to be, to finish in the same way. Thank you for this question. The, the my my perspective comes from the, well, I am a dancer and I'm also a DJ and I like I can say I work and I dance a lot. But my DJ perspective comes from basically what I learned from Felix, and he was constantly telling how there is a trust relationship between the DJ and the dancer. And this means that from the very beginning of the very first song, as a dancer, I should understand how, how the tanda is. So let's guess 
I hear no mientas. Of course, I, I can imagine that the DJ is play is gonna play some uh, Bino Triste or Paciencia, La Bruja, and go crazy, Pensar Bien, whatever. It can be, it's very hard to determine a tanda with no mienta that starts with no mientas and finishes with no variation at all. However, if the first piece, according to what Felix said, if the first piece has to present the complexity of the tanda, then if the first piece doesn't have a variation that I would expect as a dancer not to be there facing a variation with a partner that I invited to not dance a variation. Mm -hmm. Personally, I can see your point and I can definitely agree. But however, when I DJ, I do my best to be there, like trying to guarantee the dancers that if the first song is has this technical uh level then the rest of the tanda is pretty much the same yeah i should agree with david because we as dancers will rely on dj and think that the first tanda representing the whole one and we decide on a partner upon that um, of course, it should be consistent. Uh, there, I agree totally. I would say you are quite an expert in knowing that when you hear the beginning of Nomientes, that it will not finish with variaciones. Any other person would just say, ah, it's Darienzo, and uh, it will be a good <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Uh, <laughs> I agree. <laughs> so the. I take it, uh, what, what I say is, or what I want also to show in, in this format, like sometimes it's really nice to have a tanda where, that has a lot of um, constant elements. So I start with the complexity and I end with the complexity and maybe there is some development in the middle or not, but uh, to be there. Here, as I said, with the symphony form idea, it's leading more relaxing a little bit in the third and then having the, the the finale, the highest point in, in, in the last one. Yeah? Uh, let's have a look a little bit at the other songs. Uh, there will not be time for all of them. By Que Importa? We have an interesting um, detail from the main theme. So, uh, So we had this taka taka tam, taka taka tam, ta dam, para dam, ta da dam. Now, when it's re uh, repeated, Darienzo does a variation on that. So he does it syncopated. Mm -hmm. So now it's taka kata, taka kata. Before it was taka taka tam, taka taka tam. This is more Troilo style, actually. That Troilo is going crazy with uh, when he repeats. A musical motif, it's somehow altered. Darienzo in the 30s um, very often repeats four times the same. He changes articulation, but the articulation very often then at the same part of it. And here in 39, we can see that uh, it was uh, November already of 39, it got some maturity, uh, closing part of the, the style of the 30s. Let's continue listening a little bit. Or from the beginning, let's that we can hear it. So first regular and then syncopated. What is also typical for the Reenzo before that he interrupts the marcato in four. So we had taka taka tam, and there was no taka taka tam beat, taka taka tam beat. No, it was taka taka tam silencio, taka taka tam. And by that, he, I think he forces us to stay more awake with our attention. Huh? And sometimes I also like to play another mass, and where we also have this ta taka 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 tam, ka da da da, where it's really a stronger break. Or in Paciencia, we have this the same way, la vida es así. And then it continues. Yeah. So it's, um, I would say he does this, he likes to do it and he does it regularly, but still we don't notice it without really 
searching it once. Um, listen, let's listen a little bit to the B part. Here, the first song, um, No Mientas, the A and the B part were both in minor, so they have the same atmosphere. Very often, uh, tangos have different tonalities in the A and the B part, and by that, one of them is more melancholic and the other one is a little bit more happy. And here we have the dark beginning, also in a rhythmic way, and we have the B part that has the major theme. So here we have also a contrast, a stronger contrast between A and B. So before we was like taka taka tam, taka taka tam, and then like, ram pam, and for that. As before, the B part starts directly with the bandonians. So for this, it's the same um, way of dealing with it. And here is interesting, when he repeats the B part, he changes the phrasing. So we had da da ra pa 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 pam, and when he repeats it, and then we have Polito getting crazy. And, um, and I think this is why it's so, um, so popular and why we appreciate to dance it, because we we have a lot to play with and it's simple but still yeah offering a lot of colors and the same motif as you said is repeated on and on with small differences that depend on the nature of the instrument that is interpreting the same motif so the way the voice can can modulate the motif is slightly different from the way the and the neon that is, or the violin can interpret it the same motive. And these interruptions, these constant interruptions with the piano offer the opportunity to switch from one instrument to the other or add energy or create suspension in term, in, from the dancing perspective. Absolutely. I really love it. Yeah. The, um, most instruments, also the voice, can play both articulations. So we, the bandonian can play staccato, but the bandonian can also play extreme legato. Uh, so, maybe the bandonian section of, of Tarenzo is not famous for the legato. It's more, for example, <laughs> the Sali section that is in general not so famous for, but rather famous for the legato or Troilo, of course. Um, the Sali is great also for the staccato with violins, which is with pretty, the, violin, uh, the pizzicato. Yeah. special. And he's both, like uh, his violins do everything. They, they do the, yeah, exactly. the contracanto going crazy, they do the contracanto in uh, one big line, and they do, do the rhythmic uh, articulation as well, the violins. But today, Darien Tsai Chagwe. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> today, Darien Tsai Chagwe. Here, we um, we have the let's listen when Chagua gets in. Poco tiempo atera era tu querer la luz que alumbraba mi existencia. And again, we had the bandonians that start with the Chagua, but then when the violins get in, the bandonians just continue with the marcato. So it never gets overcrowded in a musical sense. It never gets too dense. Yes, true. Poco tiempo atera. And Echagüe also has this with poco tiempo atrás, more spoken, era tu carrera, is in a different mood. And he, he doesn't have this beautiful voice compared, for example, to Podesta or Rufino. But he's uh, playing a lot with telling the story and, and with his narrator skills. And uh, he's the perfect singer for the Alianza Orchestra, I guess. Even though I like Laborde more than Echagüe for the timber quality, and even Ramos is great. I mean, but Echagüe, I guess, has the he has the perfect voice to 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 pair with all the instrument uh, idea that Darienzo has. 
I mean, he, and in fact, I guess that he, he played uh, slightly more pieces than Laborde, but I guess in Europe, we have much more Darien Sochawe than Laborde, I guess. I was, I was talking about it with uh, uh, Mario Orlando, and he showed me that uh, Echagua and, and, and Laborde recorded more or less the same number of songs. But when I first met Laborde, I thought it was not even 20% of Echagua. But in Europe, we, we know much more Echagua than Laborde. And I think the reason is it's pure Darienzo. One reason might also be that um, they recorded both in mid 40s and they both recorded in the early 50s or late 40s and, uh, and then late 50s again maybe the last ones even in the 70s i think uh, but these are the periods that don't get played as much as um, late 30s and early 40s uh, with maori and uh, so for, for for this we don't hear la borda as much as um, uh, as Echagüe. I was considering dedicating the session to this early 50s uh, or 49 to 52 uh, because I think it's interesting music and we could listen or we could hear it more often played at the Milonga. But yeah. And you play it a lot, I guess, no? You, you, you play it I a lot. I remember you love, you, love more, you love a lot these, these uh, more modern Darienzo. Um, I, I played some. I think in Munich, I played uh, the mid 40s. Uh, but I mean, I don't remember when, when you heard me playing last time in, in Munich. No, I remember we were talking when we were having dinner together. Oh. You were uh, telling me a lot of interesting stuff about those, those, uh, those years of Darienzo. And now I don't remember, but you also, we were doing our typical tango interchange like I give you this song you give me that song and you gave me some amazing songs with huge quality uh, of those Darienzo periods so I guess it would be very interesting to hear you talking about those uh, Darienzo 50s. But I, I think I, I gave you uh, Reynald but we are we're online let's, uh, let's not uh, talk too much about this. <laughs> See this. Um, Let's get back to Darienzo Echagua 39. The third song is a composition by Darienzo himself. I always like to put one song of the, the orchestra leader uh, that he composed as well. So this time it was Elvino Triste. And uh, when it starts, it, for me, it's not the typical Darienzo mood. It's, it, it's very soft. It's very da 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 da. Uh, it's triste. Playful even. Would you say it's it's sad, Ala? Is it sad for you? Um, no, I think it's not sad. It's melancholical, like any tango, but not sad. <laughs> When the B part starts, we have the third time again the bandonion section or the bandonion solo that starts. And um, we had a mini, mini, mini appearance of the violin at the end of the A part. And that was very typical for the instrumentals in the 30s. So I, I played the last phrase of the A part. <laughs> And this is also typical Darienzo, that when he repeats, first it was all rhythmical. 
And now the violins join and it's a different start. But very soon he gets back to the rhythmical. It's just like one, one color and then it, it gets. But I think it's an important uh, element that he has this um, three seconds of, uh, of different colors. And then starts the, um, the singing. We are almost uh, done by, with our time. I would like to play... We didn't focus on the texts. We didn't focus on the texts, no. And I didn't have the... the uh, uh, not for every uh, not for every song, no. Compared to the um, songs that we had, um, Pugliese, Montero, or also Troilo Ruiz, we can see that the, um, the topic is uh, more general. My my woman left me, and I I have to deal with this. Um, you want to give some remarks, David, on. Uh, also, the development. Is... Yeah, I guess. Yeah, please. You mean about the lyrics? Yes. Well, as you said, the lyrics are pretty much focusing on the topic that the bad woman left a guy, a poor guy. But I think it's interesting to see how culturally this uh, translates into a, what is the reaction of the guy in this situation. No? So it's interesting that in El Vino Triste, the figure of the friends appear in the song. So the friends see him sad and 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 drinking, and he excuses himself with the friends for for appearing in this way. And then he finds a way to express the reason why he's uh, in this condition. And in the second, in the last, uh, in Trago Margo, you have him talking with the mother and the mate in front of the fire. So I guess here again, we see the Latin very intense interaction with the mother, which is the main figure together with the mother crying in front of the fire, uh, like telling the story about, of this lady while this is pretty much into maybe it's it, it it was in their culture and i think we can still see some of these details in the modern latin perspective i'm italian and i, I can imagine that <laughs> so i guess that's interesting because also culturally wise when you get the text you can uh put something more in the way you interpret like, the dancing yeah definitely there are moments that look pretty happy in the song and then if you if you hear the the lyrics you kind of change the way you interpret it that moment um how is it for you when when he he's talking to the friends and then when he's uh, pido perdon and uh, having these lyrics like he's realizing or he already knew it before or um... I think that pride is is pretty central in our culture and maybe this is one of the few moments in which a guy is allowed to show his emotions like when a, when a woman left you then leave you then you you might have the opportunity to be yourself and and express your emotions mm. uh, at the limit of being a victim and and uh, and uh, show how strong you can be and how painful it was in this case he knows that the friends are continuously telling him that he looks sad and, and there is also some poetry some some romance in this because it's like the taste of the wine is is uh, bitter because the emotion that he puts in the atmosphere can like color the taste of the wine as well. So it's like I'm sad and everything around me, it's sad. Also the wine has a sad uh, taste and I'm sorry for this, my friends. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm terrible and whatever. 
<laughs> no, it's like <laughs> very intense, very intense song. Now I remember that we were drinking whiskey together in Munich. <laughs> Yeah, not Mate, but <laughs> considering the last song, I was like, <laughs> I have to go with Mate. <laughs> okay. Before we finish, I would like to give you some details about the last song. Uh, so let's yeah, listen to it from the beginning. Uh, You heard at the very end there was a single syncopation. So we have all the time tum, 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 and at the end we have this raka tum. And uh, D'Arienzo is not using syncopation as regularly as Tanturi does or as Troilo does. And by that, it's sometimes harder to predict it. In the 50s, he became more regular with his use of uh, syncopation. Here, it's uh, a whole phrase, no syncopation, and then it's on the fifth strong beat. And uh, that is happening the same in the second part of the A part. Two phrases, the first phrase, no syncopation with some violin contracanto, and then again, the syncopation on five, big count at the end. So the second time was on three, sorry, not on five. The second time was earlier. Um, again, the violin contracanto is not very typical, um, but happening uh, frequently, or how to say, like we had uh, the bandonions at the beginning of each B part. Let's see how it's with the last song. Again, bandonions start with it. And again, lyric with the violins. We had the same um, uh, concept already before in the other two songs. Um, an unusual thing and very nice for dancing is that when Echaque sings the B part, we first have a piano contracanto. And then when the second time he sings the B part uh, or the third and fourth phrase, we have a chain of syncopation. <laughs> So this is really a moment, uh, what you said, Ala, before, here we can choose. Go with, do we go with the singer or do we go with the piano? They are both like uh, equally important in a musical perspective. But not in this song for me, unfortunately. In this song, <laughs> it's piano? Yes, Chago is, uh, I guess, this is his best performance, uh, best vocal. And I cannot go without, uh, with anything but his voice and i really like the phrasing uh which is uh not in the, like he's not following the, st the structure of music he soars on it and this is what i really love to interpret while dancing um this is personal choice then um just from a musical point of view sometimes for example the contracanto is not as long as the main melody and it's just like uh, happening for five seconds. And of course we can follow it for five seconds, but here it's more substantial also. But still, of course you can stay with the chagwe. Uh, for me, the piano is very um, calling for me. Let's listen to it one more time. What I love also about it is that it has the, the um, dum, dum, da, 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 the sostenido. So, so it's uh, it's not just uh, many notes. Uh, very often in in Darienzo, the piano has just like and and then comes something else. And here to to have the um, the longer phrasing and also the we would even say the piano is singing with this. My piano teacher, the music university, always say yeah now, and uh, this is one of the moments. Uh, last time and then we continue. <laughs>
And now it was the famous uh, chain syncopation three times. Ta dam pa da raka, ta dam pa da raka, ta dam pa da raka, ta dam pa da dam. We had that with Droilo, we had that with Anturi Campos as well. Um, Darienzo is not using it very often. Here is one of the few cases that he does. One more time, this. <laughs> And the typical ending with a big piano solo and then the bandonion variaciones. Um, we are already 10 minutes above the time. Do you have some closing comments, uh, David or Allah? I think we can we can we can be here talking for a long long time more. I'm sure, I'm sure. I guess that it's I I love the way you 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 guided this exploration and uh you finish with the and and you're right to finish the this exploration with the syncopation which is from the dancer perspective the main focus you want to have when you dance such pieces and when you dance troilo like you can jump any phrase, you can choose to go for the voice or the violin or this or that melodical line. But at the end, if you if you can pick the syncopation while dancing, I think you can really be proud of what you're doing. <laughs> like from the dancing perspective, you never miss the syncopation. And with a dancer with Allah, like dancing with a good follower like Allah, maybe it, it's also even more interesting like to get to get those with a boleo or a, or a foot play so i guess yeah we can go on hours and hours but for now i'm thanking you because i love the way you guided this uh exploration and i'm happy that you invited me i'm proud and uh yeah i hope to see you soon around thank you David. maybe djing together somewhere <laughs> yeah thank you helmut it was really interesting thank you for inviting us I hope we see in Lviv, Allah, at least. Yeah. Are you coming, David? Uh, at the moment, it's not planned. It's not planned. You still have four weeks to, to do it. Yeah, <laughs> no. I have a, a personal background story. It's like when, when I booked, I didn't think about it. And then I realized that my passport uh, expired and uh, I didn't use it the last year. <laughs> and uh, now, the all appointments you have to get in advance and the next four weeks are booked out so i don't know uh, if i can find a way to get my passport renewed otherwise it will be hard to enter i have a similar problem i have a similar problem because my passport is gonna expire in september i guess and somebody told me that in some countries when you go you have to have minimum three months mm. uh, of time before the expiration and so I'm getting like, uh, yeah, I, I need to, I need to fix also the passport problem. And, but I live, I'm, I'm Italian, so I'm supposed to go there unless I want to wait for a long time to, to renovate it in Germany and whatever. Mm. But this is really out of the topic. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> some, some personal background stories. Uh, thank you all for being here tonight. Um, do you have some projects you, you want to talk about, Ala, David, uh, some promotion? about your school in Munich, in Kiev, um, about some projects uh, you want people to get to know? 
Oh, for now, I just have a school in Kyiv uh, with my partner Taras, and I don't know, should we <laughs> promote it internationally or not? But, uh, well, let's say Ukraine is one of the countries who is dancing freely now, and I invite everyone to visit Kyiv this summer and autumn. We have really nice local milongas and some festivals marathons um, just let me know and i will guide you through our events mm -hmm. and maybe that's it this is what i can do <laughs> what i can say about uh, me sounds very tempting i, I might write you <laughs> yeah for me as well i'm working in munich at the moment uh teaching and uh this, the, the school is going amazingly. I love to do what I'm doing. And my DJ activity is limited at the moment, even though I have some, uh, some dates for uh, this uh, autumn. And there are other projects that I cannot talk about at the moment. Only one, which is a tango card game. Tango card game. <laughs> yes. I love card it's games. It's a tango karma tango card game it's something something huge something really strong that i started to think about three years ago and during the quarantine we have i have been playing it with my students it was like it has been like a working progress and it's like a tango game that uh, has the the aim to develop some skills uh technical skills and also emotional connection uh, aspects of the tango and it's it's pretty much fun and I can I, I don't want to explain it but maybe we can have another talk once I can launch the game officially and you can have one that one deck of the cards uh, you can be one of the first ones who can officially Ooh. have uh, a deck and yeah we can definitely discuss it I'm not, I'm not sure when it will be ready to come out. We are still finishing the design and it will probably go on an app also. So it will be in, in, a, in, a, in a paper form, like a normal card deck, like a Pokemon cards. It's expandable deck. It's an expandable deck with a, with a basic uh, deck and some expansions. And there will be also an online app uh, this is a game you can play alone, you can play with a partner, you can play in various modes, and, and you, you can also play it uh, if you are in different cities. So, a uh, lot of stuff to talk about, but... <laughs> very nice, very nice. <laughs> you find the best moment. A lot of surprises, David. So, um, thanks a lot for being here tonight. We can have an unofficial after party, but I will stop the, the live stream now. And so if you want to stay for the after, just stay in the Zoom. If not, uh, goodbye and thanks for being with us tonight. Sure. Thank you. Uh... <laughs>